we're going to move over to uh, migrating societies. We have two um, presenters, and you're going to be up here at the same time. Wonderful. Um, we have Ida Maria Tenvik Bringdal and Line Rud Öslin, uh, and you're going to talk about more of the sort of the the artistic and the and the um, uh, situation or the the power of art in migration work. Correct. Perfect. Great. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, ambassadors and the uh, Tori Idol Institute, thank you so much for inviting us to talk about this project that is really close to our heart. Um, Migrating Societies uh, was an exchange program that Telemark Art Center in Sheen had from 2015 to 2018 in cooperation with uh, the Telemark County Council. I'm just trying to get this work. Oh, I'll put. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the Art Center had uh, two project partners in Minneapolis, uh, Bokley Gallery and uh, Sioux Visual Arts Center. Whereas Bokley Gallery is a private gallery, uh, Sioux is a non-profit art space, more similar to the Art Center in Sheen. <clears throat> the project came about on the initiative of Telemark County Council. Research trips was arranged for the director of the art center and for the art advisor of the county council to assess the possibilities for a collaborative project. Institutions and people both in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in Minot, North Dakota and in New York were visited uh, before the conclusion was made to have Bokle Gallery and Suvac in Minneapolis as partners. Uh, during the project period, uh, several exhibitions were arranged and several artists also traveled between the regions. Telemark County Council has for many years had connections in Minneapolis, both in the fields of education and business. A large amount of the population in Minnesota have roots in Norway. In this context, it seemed natural to let the exchange program have migration as its overriding theme. Humans have migrated at all times, both between countries and within countries, to seek a better life, find a job or look for inspiration. The idea that art can contribute to greater understanding between people was a cornerstone in the program. The Norwegian society today is almost as much characterized by, by migration as the American society. We wanted to focus on a new understanding of migration issues to establish new dialogues between the two societies through art and artistry, to create some new perspective, perspectives and mutual respect. So, when the first exhibition took place at Telemark Arts Art Center in September 2015, Pa, Hua, Her, and Wendy Red Star were the artists. Pa, Her is originally from Laos, but she emigrated as a child to the United States. The works on display at the Art Center were portraits of war veterans from Laos who fought on the American side against North Vietnam in the Vietnam War. The veterans who belonged to the Hmong minority later emigrated to the United States, but they were not celebrated as war heroes there. All equipment for uniforms and medals are uh, purchased online. Also, they do not receive any funding as veterans from the state, and they will not be buried at Arlington Cemetery. There are many indigenous groups in the US. These various groups have also migrated both geographically, geographically and culturally over several hundred years. When new settlers arrived in the US, many tribes were forced away from their original territories and into reservations where their life often became very hard. When the Red Star belongs to the Native American group of Crow Indians. In her art, When the Red Star explores cultural identity and also the connections and contradictions between Crow culture and contemporary culture in the US. 
Red Star's work often includes cliched representations of Native Americans, colonialism, the environment, and her own family. Her humorous approach and use of Native American images from t traditional media draw the viewer into her work while also confronting romanticized representations. She juxtaposes popular depictions of Native Americans with authentic cultural and gender identities. Her work can be described as funny, brash, and surreal. Both artists visited Telemark during their exhibition period. They met several of the local artists in Telemark and gave lectures on their art at the art center. The exhibition of Marilyn Owens in, at Suvac opened in the fall of 2015 in Minneapolis. Owens is originally from England, but she immigrated to Norway some 20 years ago. In Minneapolis, she exhibited a number of graphic works. I don't think it jumped. Yeah, perfect. She's interested in questions about the passing of time people and places that are now lost to us, and events that often create, create unwanted changes. She spent three weeks as an artist in residence in Minneapolis, where she made new connections in the local art scene. She visited places in the city with connections to the Scandinavian immigrants, but she also met, uh, visited other areas character, characterized by different, different ethnic groups. Back home in Norway, Owens created new graphic work based on her experiences with being in Minneapolis. She called the series Guns and Ammo, and the picture you look at now is of an etching with the title How Can You Own the Rain and the Wind? The series title comes from the name of a shop she went by on her everyday walk in Minneapolis, and the work she, she made afterwards was the artist dealing with the impressions of her study trip. For these two exhibitions, the one at Suvac and the other one on the other continent at Telemark Art Center, we created one catalog, including a text by the American native author Louise Erdrich. Her writing is on most curriculum lists in American schools. She received the Pulitzer Prize in 2021 for her novel, The Night Watchman. We are very proud that she took interest in the project and for having her text in one of the catalogs. Andrea Carlson grew up near the Great Lakes in Minnesota. She had an exhibition at the Art Center in Cheyenne in 2016, and she was also an artist in residence in Telemark at the same time. Her artworks are drawn landscapes with cultural and thematic references from the area where she grew up. Her aesthetic has strong ties to comic books, mixed with elements from the Ojibwe culture, the largest indigenous tribe in Minnesota to which Andrea belongs. In her art, there's a fusion of popular and ancient culture, and she also questions our perceptions. The exhibition was called The Cannibal. Carlson works with complex narratives that mind the uneasy subject of cultural stereotyping by museums and popular cinema. She deals with terms such as cultural appropriation, where sometimes holy elements from one culture are borrowed and used by another. The elements are looked upon as exotic, but at the same time the content and meaning is being transformed. The problems often arise when majority cultures borrow from minority culture without accreditation and or the willingness of understanding the real value. In the United States, this is an ongoing source to discussion and cultural struggle. We have also seen this question being more and more addressed in Norway, but this exhibition was one of the first to raise these questions in Norway. 
This shows some of the value that lies in cultural exchanges between different regions and cultures. Carlsen visited both Telemark and Oslo during her stay in Norway and made connections to the art scene and also a lecture on her art to a wider audience. The catalogue contains text by several American authors. In the introduction written by the two of us, we raised questions related to immigrants to Norway. Do we make it possible for them to keep some of what is theirs? What, is, what exactly is Norwegian culture? What do immigrants to Norway bring with them? What can enrich us? And in what way should we demand respect for our values? Through migration, the world has in many ways become smaller, with different cultures living side by side. How can we understand each other and learn more together? Åno Versto is from Inner Telemark. The artist group Katla, of which Versto is a part, has worked together for several years. During their exhibition at Suvac in Minneapolis in the autumn of 2016, they displayed a project that presented a fictional discovery of a new archipelago that Katla found on its way over the Atlantic Ocean to the US. The exhibition consisted of objects, films, and photos, and was called the Landscapes of Katla. They wanted to question how our common storytelling, for instance in museums, can also sometimes be quite fictional. The exhibition questions both migration and the very discovery of America itself. Mohamed Munin is a Somali immigrant to Minneapolis. For three years, he worked on a photo project where he portrayed 13 young Somali men living in Minnesota. The exhibition, The Youth, was shown in Telemark in 2017. Munin wants to shed light on how these men make their contribution to the American society, their new homeland. They take part in a broad range of activities, from entrepreneurship to social activism, and they all want to take an active part in their new society. At the same time, they have an internal conflict re related to both feeling as a part of society and as strangers and foreigners. In connection with the exhibition, a new newspaper with testimonies was made. There was also a video where the Somali men shared stories about their travels to Minnesota and the conflicts they feel in connection with at the same time trying to be themselves and also belonging in Minneapolis. There is a large Somali population in Cheyenne. When Mumin was in Cheyenne, he had workshops on his working methods with both adult students who were new in Norway and with school students. At the exhibition opening, a completely new audience group came to the art center. It was moving to see, maybe also because the art field is often very white. At this event, several people in Cheyenne probably felt that the exhibition was about them and about themes that they could relate to. To be able to make a more sustainable future, we believe that an understanding and respect of other people is necessary. We found a lot of connections in Minneapolis, colleagues, friends and people to talk with and learn from. The basis of doing a project like this, where the artistic methods are the most important, is knowing how to look for quality in the projects and how to find expressions that are interesting. You cannot start with a thematic umbrella, but you have to work your way through an ocean of thoughts and suddenly find the most obvious answer. We are grateful for the knowledge this has given us, and we hope you as an audience found the travel somewhat insightful. Thank you.
Thank you so much, both of you, for sharing your story. Um, I participated partly, and I'm not sure if this was a part of this project, with DIG and Shan and Two Dance. Was that a part of this project at all with Lori? No. No, OK. Yeah, so one of the things I just love about art, right, is that it is a universal language. And there's different way of communicating through art that uh, brings us together, which it looks like this project was an example of. Um, one of the things uh, that I've done um, as an art integration coach in the United States is actually bringing artists into the schools as teaching artists, both in teaching in their art form and through their art form, uh, and then bringing in um, artists from all over the world, which then creates that other level of language um, and sharing and making sure that students in the classroom also feel that they belong um, in the culture in which they live in. So. Great, thank you.